go through my full setup with you guys uh, for the sumo deadlift. A uh, few things I want to just note up front. Uh, yes, I do still have powerlifting aspirations in the future. Uh, that's basically the main reason why I'm performing uh, this movement. Uh, from a strictly bodybuilding perspective, um, I might slightly favor the sumo deadlift because I am aware of some EMG data that has shown a very slight increase in glute activation uh, as well as more quad involvement. Uh, however, glute and hamstring activation were uh, pretty much the same between the two. This, I would imagine that the reset at the bottom of a uh, deadlift and then the you know, accompanying loss in tension uh, could have potentially negative repercussions for hypertrophy. Um, however, from a powerlifting perspective, uh, I do think that a full reset between reps is how the deadlift should pretty much always be performed in training. So as you guys can probably see here or have already seen, uh, I am using straps in this workout. And the reason for that is that I am just a little bit fearful of some muscle imbalances that could result from uh, the over under grip. I'm gonna break this down into some steps for you guys. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is uh, find your stance width. Um, if you are using straps, you'll notice that the first thing that I do is actually strap in and I'll keep my stance narrow and then I'll find my stance. So how wide your stance will actually be is mostly going to be dependent upon your adductor flexibility and your mobility at the hip. Um, if you would like to work on getting a wider sumo stance, since this generally is advantageous from a biomechanical point of view, uh, I would recommend performing some simple static stretches for your adductors uh, and in the past I've found three sets of 20 to 30 second holds with the uh, squat and reach stretch uh, to be pretty helpful um, and yeah the wider stance is what you should be going for generally speaking um, from a strictly biomechanical perspective uh, really just because it allows your hips to get closer to the bar uh, reducing that moment arm uh, and if you look at my girlfriend Robin uh, when she pulls uh, she, her toes are all the way out to the plates um, and you want that bar to be right over the midline of your foot um, so then the second thing that you'll do is you know find your degree of foot flare um, generally pointing your toes out towards the front end of the plates is sort of a good ballpark estimate, uh, but you're gonna have to play around with this and find out what allows you to maintain your balance and yet also allows you to uh, keep your knees out. If your feet are too flared outwards, you'll lose your balance. Uh, if they're too pointed too far forward, it'll just feel really awkward and it'll sort of force your knees inward into like a weird valgus position. So step three, you know, reach down, grab the bar. Uh, you want your grip width to be straight down. Uh, so you want to make your effective arm length as long as possible. Uh, for me, with a five foot two wingspan, I will take advantage of every bit of arm length that I can get. Long arms are advantageous in the deadlift, uh, simply because you don't have to drop your hips as low to actually reach the bar. So the range of motion that you have to go through is shortened. Um, it also allows you to get your hips a little bit closer to the bar, uh, reducing that moment arm again. So rather than uh, taking a wide grip or a, a too narrow of a grip, I put them straight down. Uh, step four, you want to sort of simultaneously or at least sequentially uh, lift your chest up high. You want to push your knees out over uh, your toes or in the direction of your toes. Um, and you want to take the tension out of the bar and then simply lift the weight. Uh, and by take the tension out of the bar, what I mean is not just going up, grabbing the bar and just ripping it off the ground. Uh, if you do this, you'll find that the bar will come up solid as soon as the plates are about to leave the ground. Uh, so instead, what you wanna do is pull up on the bar until you feel that little bit of resistance from the plates. And uh, then once you've pulled that tension out of the bar itself, it's already going to be bent to some degree then you can just you know lift your chest up sit back and initiate the pull from there um, as a final note I will say that throughout the movement uh, as you're pulling um, the knees should be the first thing to lock out and then you should lock out the hips I had to do those uh, touch-and-go style because um, 
Well, for one, I think that the eccentric component of a deadlift is important for bodybuilding purposes. And also, I'm not sure I could do them if I had to reset. So after the first rep, I felt that it was already a better RP 9.5. So I figured rather than cut the set short, I would um, just do them touch and go. And that little bit of bounce off the bottom allowed me to get uh, those last two, two reps and finish out the set strong. So guys, then it was on to front squats. I uh, won't go into any technique or anything here. Uh, we'll just go over the basic biomechanics. Uh, the reason front squats are programmed here is where I was just doing a, a hip dominant movement. This is more of a knee dominant movement. And the reason for that, as you can see in the figure there in the, in the corner, uh, is that by placing the bar more anteriorly or more to the front, you basically force yourself to stay more upright in order to keep the load balanced over the middle of your foot. Uh, and as you can see in that figure there, uh, this forces the moment between uh, the load or the bar and your knee to be much greater in the front squat than in the back squat. Uh, so effectively, this makes it a more quad dominant than a hip dominant movement. So after the front squats, it was onto some basic leg extensions. After that, it was single leg leg curls. I do perform these movements both bilaterally and unilaterally. And the advantage of bilaterally, obviously, is that you uh, get to move more load. Uh, the advantage of unilaterally is that you can isolate each uh, leg individually. And so, uh, you make sure that one leg isn't uh, you know, taking more control uh, or taking more of the load than uh, the other. And then I finished out this workout with some seated toe presses on the leg press machine. And here's a quick posing update for you guys. Uh, really feel good about where things are sitting now at 13 weeks out. Uh, my macros still haven't been dropped or anything, and uh, I think that the physique is still looking nice and full. Energy levels are good, uh, hunger levels are certainly manageable, and uh, as you can see, you know, my deadlift strength has dropped off a little bit, uh, but nothing too drastic at this point, and uh, I feel really good about how the prep is going so far. So uh, I want to thank you guys again for watching this video. I appreciate all the positive feedback on the previous one. And uh, if you're enjoying this kind of content, please don't forget to like the video, uh, comment below if you have anything uh, interesting to add, and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Thanks, guys.